the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. My brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mystery. Lord Jesus, you've shown us the way to the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you have given us the consolation of the truth. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the good shepherd leading us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Look upon us, O God, creator and ruler of all things, and that we may feel the working of your mercy. Grant that we may serve you with all our hearts, through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, Someone may say, How are the dead raised? With what kind of body will they come back? You fool! What you sow is not brought to life unless it dies. And what you sow is not the body that is to be, but a bare kernel of wheat, perhaps, or some other kind. So also is the resurrection of the dead. It is sown corruptible, it is raised incorruptible. It is sown dishonorable, it is raised glorious. It is sown weak, it is raised powerful. It is sown a natural body, it is raised a spiritual body. If there is a natural body, there is also a spiritual one. So, too, it is written. The first man, Adam, became a living being, the last Adam, a life-giving spirit. But the spiritual was not first, rather the natural and then the spiritual. The first man was from the earth, earthly, the second man from heaven. As was the earthly one, so also are the earthly. And as is the heavenly one, so also are the heavenly. Just as we have borne the image of the earthly one, we shall also bear the image of the heavenly one. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I will walk in the presence of God in the light of the living. I will walk in the presence of God in the light of the living. Now I know that God is with me, in God in whose promises I glory, in God I trust without fear, what can flesh do against me? I will walk in the presence of God in the light of the living. I am bound, O God, by vows to you. Your thank offerings I will fulfill, for you have rescued me from death, my feet too from stumbling, that I may walk before God in the light of the living. I will walk in the presence of God in the light of the living. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. Blessed are they who have kept the word with a generous heart and yield a harvest through perseverance. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord. When a large crowd gathered with people from one town after another, journeying to Jesus, he spoke in a parable. A sower went out to sow his seed, and as he sowed, some seed fell on the path and was trampled, and the birds of the sky ate it up. 
Some seed fell on rocky ground, and when it grew, it withered for lack of moisture. Some seed fell among thorns, and the thorns grew with it and choked it. And some seed fell on good soil, and when it grew, it produced fruit a hundredfold. After saying this, he called out, Whoever has ears to hear ought to hear. Then his disciples asked him what the meaning of this parable might be. He answered, Knowledge of the mysteries of the kingdom of God has been granted to you, but to the rest they are made known through parables, so that they may look but not see, and hear but not understand. This is the meaning of the parable. The seed is the word of God. Those on the path are the ones who have heard, but the devil comes and takes away the word from their hearts that they may not believe and be saved. Those on rocky ground are the ones who, when they hear, receive the word with joy, but they have no root. They believe only for a time and fall away in time of temptation. As for the seed that fell among thorns, they are the ones who have heard, but as they go along, they are choked by the anxieties and riches and pleasures of life, and they fail to produce mature fruit. But as for the seed that fell on rich soil, they are the ones who, when they have heard the word, embrace it with a generous and good heart and bear fruit through perseverance. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. My dear friends, today our Mass intention is a prayer of thanksgiving for all those who today are completing their isolation and quarantine because of exposure to COVID-19. We offer a prayer of thanksgiving to God for their return to good health. Let us also keep in our prayers today the people of Bermuda, our suffragan diocese. They are preparing for the impact of a second hurricane in just over a week. May they be protected and spared any serious damage from Hurricane Teddy, which is coming their way. Today, the Diocese of Mandeville, Jamaica, is receiving a new bishop. Bishop John Prasad will be ordained there this morning. But for all the travel restrictions related to the current pandemic, I would be present with them for his Episcopal ordination, sharing the joy of the faithful of the Diocese of Mandeville. Bishop John served admirably as the General Secretary of our Bishops' Conference during my second term as the President of the Conference. Dear friends, as we focus on our readings today, our scripture passages before us, we notice that our first reading today continues Paul's discussion, his explanation of the resurrection the resurrection which for us is the foundation of our faith, the foundation of our hope. And Paul is addressing an issue which arose in the community at Corinth. That issue was expressed in the form of a question. How are the dead raised? What kind of body? With what kind of body will they come back? Paul responds to the question using an image, an analogy, drawn from nature, drawn from farming, drawn from agriculture. He says, what you sow is not brought to life unless it dies. And what you sow is not the body that is to be, but a bare kernel of wheat or perhaps of some other kind. 
So also with the resurrection, he says, the resurrection of the dead. It is sown corruptible, it is raised incorruptible. It is sown dishonorable, it is raised glorious. It is sown weak, it is raised powerful. It is sown a natural body, it is raised a spiritual body. Then he concludes that section. If there is a natural body, there is also a spiritual one. The questions about the resurrection of the dead may be as real today for us as they were in the time of Paul and the community at Corinth. His words are as worthy of our reflection and our consideration as they were of the consideration and reflection of that community at Corinth for which they were initially intended. The analogy drawn from nature, from farming, from agriculture, is also used in our gospel today. And in today's gospel, Jesus teaches about the kingdom of God using a parable. And then he goes and he explains the meaning of the parable to the disciples who asks him, what does it mean? The long and the short of it is that we are to be the seed which fell on rich soil. As Jesus says, for the seed that fell on rich soil, they are the ones who, when they have heard the word, Embrace it with a generous and good heart and bear fruit through perseverance. Embracing the word with a generous and good heart and bearing fruit through perseverance. May that generous and good heart and may that perseverance in faith be ours, my dear friends, even and especially in challenging times like these are. Perseverance in faith, a generous and good heart. May that be ours today and always. Let us pray. Let us pray first of all for our church throughout the world that it may continue to remain faithful and grow in faith. For this we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for Francis, our Pope, that he may continue to lead us after the manner of Christ the Good Shepherd, with courage and compassion, we, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all those completing their time of isolation and quarantine and thanksgiving for their return to good health. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for the people of Bermuda as they prepare to be impacted by Hurricane Teddy, that they be spared any serious destruction and damage. For this we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all those among us who find this time to be a time of loneliness, a time of sadness, a time of depression, that they may know the nearness of the Lord who cares, and they may also experience the love of friends and neighbors. For this we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And in silence now, let us put before the Lord our own needs, the needs which weigh most heavily upon each of our hearts at this moment. For all these things, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Good and gracious look, God, we ask that you hear and grant our prayers and grant our needs at this time and keep us grateful and faithful to you. May we always have that generous spirit which produces perseverance even in the most challenging of times. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God, brothers. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Through the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. 
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name for our bread and the Lord's Church. Look with favor on our supplications, O Lord, and in your kindness accept these your servants' offerings, that what each has offered to the honor of your name may serve the salvation of all through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For in goodness you have created us, and when we were justly condemned, in mercy you redeemed us through Christ our Lord. Through him the angels praise your majesty. Dominions adore and powers tremble before you. Heaven and the virtues of heaven and the blessed seraphim worship together with exaltation. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in humble praise as we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy and to be glorified, O God who love the human race and who always walk with us on the journey of life. Blessed indeed is your Son present in our midst when we are gathered by his love and when, as once for the disciples, so now for us, he opens the scriptures and breaks the bread. Therefore, Father, most merciful, we ask that you send forth your Holy Spirit to sanctify these gifts of bread and wine, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, the night of the Last Supper, he took bread and said the blessing and broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, gave you thanks, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, Holy Father, we are, we, as we celebrate the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Savior, whom you led through his passion and death on the cross to the glory of the resurrection, and whom you have seated at your right hand, we proclaim the work of your love until he comes again, and we offer you the bread of life and the chalice of blessing. Look with favor on the oblation of your church, in which we show forth the paschal sacrifice of Christ that has been handed on to us. And grant that by the power of the Spirit of, of, of your love, we may be counted now and until the day of eternity among the members of your Son, in whose body and blood we have communion. Bring your church, O Lord, to perfect faith and charity, together with Francis our Pope, with me, your unworthy servant, with all the bishops, priests, and deacons, and the entire people you have made your own. Open our eyes to the needs of our brothers and sisters, Inspire in us words and actions to comfort those who labor and are burdened. Make us serve them truly after the example of Christ and at his command. And may our church stand as a living witness to the truth and freedom, the peace and justice that all people may be raised up to a new hope. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the peace of your Christ and all, who have dead, all the dead whose faith you alone have known, admit them to rejoice in the light of your face, and in the resurrection give them the fullness of life. Grant also to us, when our earthly pilgrimage is done, that we may come to an eternal dwelling place and live with you forever, there in communion with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the apostles and martyrs, with all the saints, we shall praise and exalt you through Jesus Christ, your Son. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever. 
the devil. Amen. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, and graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Lamb of God. You take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. The body and blood of Christ keep me safe and Amen. our act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are really present in the Blessed Sacrament. I love you above all things, and I hunger to receive you. Since I cannot receive communion at this moment, feed my soul at least spiritually. I unite myself wholly to you now, as I do when I ask to receive you. Permit me never to be separated from you. Amen. And this is, of course, as you know, for the benefit of those of you joining me via the digital media and are unable to physically receive communion at this time. This provision for spiritual communion is a provision made for, for us by the church. Let us pray. <clears throat> May the working of the, this heavenly gift, O Lord, we pray, take possession of our minds and bodies so that its effect and not our desires may always prevail in us through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Now and from Our help is in the name of the Lord. May heaven and earth. The Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us go in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God. Once again, I thank you for joining me at Mass today in my little chapel here at the Hermitage. I remind you that tomorrow our string mass for the Archdiocese will be at 9, coming from St. Bede Paris with Father William. God bless you. Be safe. Practice your safety protocols. Have a wonderful day, everyone. <laughs>